afternoon, viewers. How are you? Uh, trust you've had a good day. And uh, well, it's about five in the evening. And as usual, we are glad to join you in your homes as we share um, this family forum. Um, last week, we were very pleased to have with us Reverend Ruth Hines. And of course, um, she's gracious to be with us for the second program today as we continue our focus on motherhood. Um, in today's program, we are wanting to address some of the challenges. Um, as she would have said earlier, yes, there are many beautiful things about motherhood, but challenges come along with that. Oh, yes. <laughs> Those beautiful uh, expressions and, and so on. And today we're going to focus on some of the challenges. Um, Reverend Hines, welcome. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much. It is wonderful to be here again this afternoon with you. You're right. And I, perhaps there are those who may be here who were not here last week. So I just want to let you, give you a little idea um, in terms of who she is. Reverend Hines is a former guidance counselor in the secondary school system and, of course, a mother of um, four, I should say five, because one of them is a foster child. Um, and uh, she is a very active member of the National Executive Council of the New Testament Church of God and uh, enjoys co pastoring with her husband, uh, Reverend Murdoch Hines, at the Goodland New Testament Church of God. So you can see she's busily engaged in ministry. And we are thankful that she has taken time out to be part of this evening's program. We are very happy to have her to share with us. Um, Reverend Kelman, we surely are happy to have you, sir, uh, our co-host with you, too. Well, I'm glad to hear that, sir. Yes. <laughs> and of course, we are, we are delighted to have our Ruth again to be a part of mm -hmm. this program. And, uh, and I, I trust that our last engagement has been what well, was good for you. And helpful, I'm sure it was, you know, in terms of understanding um, the gift of motherhood. And I, I do trust that you were challenged as well to, to up the bar <laughs> in terms of how you serve um, the gift of the children that God, God has given to, to, to all of us. Yes. All right. Let's have a, a brief prayer before we delve into the topic. Father, we thank you again for motherhood. Jesus. We as men are very honored to have our mothers beside us as dads, even as we raise our children, we're glad for their wisdom, we're glad for the spirit, and indeed how you function together as parents. We know that as men and as dads that we need their support, they need our support. Mm -hmm. It's a cooperative effort. Amen. I pray God that even as we would share in today's session, on the whole idea of the challenges that mothers do experience, that perhaps not only the challenges, but even we can think of the solutions as mm -hmm. well. So Father, I pray your blessings on our program today. Those who are listening right now, who may be having some challenges as parents, as mothers, for whatever reason, I trust that we may identify some of those challenges they're having and some of the possible solutions to help them. So bless us, Lord, for Christ's sake, amen. Amen. Well, viewers, we're back with you in a moment. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum, shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. Welcome back to all of you. So good to have you back with us for this um, important and hopefully life transforming program. <laughs> uh, so I want to invite Reverend Hines to share with us briefly on the, the challenges of motherhood. The challenges of motherhood. It is so wonderful to be back here again this evening. And first I want to make this statement. It comes from Lisa Marciano and she says, Mothering is one of life's greatest opportunities 
to submit to the fires of transformation. Mm -hmm. And I just love it. Mm -hmm. That's right. Because over the years, I have, and many mothers have understood what those fires of transformation are, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And part of that then will be the challenges that mothers face. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what are these challenges? And there are so many. I, I, I will not be able to identify all, mm -hmm. but I want to just focus on a couple and see how we can, we can talk about them and discuss to come in to, to even if not solutions, at least coping. How do we cope with these challenges? Now, working mothers, and as I did some research, we noticed that working mothers, they, they, they talk about fatigue and guilt and the stress of, of heading the household. Single mothers blame the extra responsibilities, financial strain, constraints on time, constantly having to make decisions and judgments and offer justification, dealing with emotions, and these emo emotions are not just their own, but the, the, the emotions of the children that they're dealing with. Mm -hmm. the, whole, um, the whole struggle of, of, of self-concept, building strong self-concept in their children and the image struggle. Am I good enough? Am I doing it right as a mother? The drudgery, the chores, the never ending housework and the homework that you help with as well. Mm -hmm. Learning to trust your own motherly instincts, that can be a challenge, you know, because if you don't feel that well, I am good enough, then the instinct of, of um, is this what I should do? D then you wave off, and that, that, sometimes that, that's the very thing you need to do. And I want to share a little bit about that as I come back to it. Never being able as a mother to switch off. Where's the switch off switch? Mm -hmm. The challenges of the teenage years, and of course the challenges of the early childhood years. And then keeping up with the changes Changes not only in your own body, but changes in your children. Mm -hmm. Then trying not to shout. Uh, and I don't mean being stern, because as part of discipline, we need to be stern, and sometimes we, we need to raise our voices. But sometimes you can live constantly shouting. And when you constantly just shout at children, they shut off. Mm -hmm. They don't hear. Mm -hmm. They don't hear. Watching our children grow up, moving from dependence on us to independence, that can be a big challenge mm -hmm. for, for our mothers. Mm -hmm. Teaching our children the fundamental morals, moral values, dealing with aggressive behaviors and antisocial behaviors in our children. Watching our children overuse the ja gadgets that we give them. <laughs> All right, and sometimes, sadly, some become hooked on them, mm -hmm. hooked on them. They go to sleep with them at the side and get up, and the first thing they get to is the, the gadget. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes there are challenges of nutrition, nutritional deficiency. So all of these are challenges that mothers face, even the challenge of raising boys. We looked at that a little bit in the last session, but... Um, when, when a, a, a mother ha has no male around to assist, mm -hmm. it can be hard. Mm -hmm. Because you can teach them, I um, can't remember the, the, the author now who said, my mother who fathered me. Edith Clark. Mm -hmm. Edith, Edith, Edith Clark, Clark. Yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. um, but your mother really doesn't want to father you. Mm -hmm. Your mother wants to mother you and, and want to have your father there or another male figure to help to father you, to help to father you. So all of these are, are challenges that mothers face on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. and, and I believe that sometimes the, the, the need for a village, the need for a village, I, 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 I think I, I grew up in a village where um, somebody saw me do something wrong, boy. They got to my mother before me, mm -hmm. right? And you know, when I got home, 
I got the talking to and the lashing. And sometimes it was in the reverse, <laughs> right? You got the lashing first, oh, and then the, and then the talking to afterwards. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it, when the talk, when you got to the talking to, you were really right and not wrong, but you got the lashings already. Okay, but um, that village, I find that, that we are living in a, co a community now where people, you know, they see the children doing something wrong and, and, and they turn their heads. It is as if um, they're not my children, so I don't have to speak to that. But I, I said to people, every child is my child. I, I, my husband is telling me I'm going to get myself in trouble. Mm -hmm. But I am driving the road going down or walking and I see a child in distress. Or in I stop. I want to know how can I help, and, and 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 to me that is the village mentality. That is how can I reach out and touch this child? I have, this child must know that somebody cares. Mm -hmm. Just last week, I saw a young man walking with his a uh, 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 slipper on, the other slipper on his hand, and I really thought something was wrong with his slipper. Mm -hmm. So I was going to call him because I always have a little glue there or something, and I did call him. Mm -hmm. And I said, so what's wrong with your slipper? And he said, it's not the slipper, it's my foot. Yeah. I have a cut on my foot. I said, well, come, let me attend to that. Mm -hmm. And he looked at me like, I said, come, yes. I got plaster and stuff. And he came and I put a little um, bentadine on it, mm -hmm. a little um, BNT ointment, mm -hmm. um, um, dust, and some plaster. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, do you have plaster at home? He told me no. And I cut off a piece of plaster and give. Mm -hmm. In other words, a village, the village. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. that, 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 that persons know I, I may not be there, but there's somebody there yeah. for my child. Mm -hmm. There's somebody there. Mm -hmm. And I think that is so important. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think that, that's, that's <coughs> the hallmark of, um, of how we were raised. How we were raised. You know, um, that corporate yes. reality, that community kind of, of, um, of spirit. Uh, of course, the challenge, though, is that we become um, very individualistic now, though. Yeah. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, we've moved away. Sometimes we don't even know our neighbor next to us. Yeah. You know, um, and uh, and that, that's a current reality. But mm -hmm. but but though the village may not exist in the way it did before, it did before. I think though that the point you're making is still very strong. That there ought to be uh, a sense of responsibility that goes beyond um, our, our our homes. Yes, you know, and that we see ourselves as being uh, critical in terms of helping to raise. Others and, and, that and we need not, to see it in the church too, you yes, know. Yes, and, and that, that, that's not that you do it in a in a consistent manner, but in terms of those random acts of kindness. E exactly, yeah, right? and, exactly. And if everyone does that, then we have uh, a greater kind of, um, you know. We will. Yeah, so All right. We, we we thank you for that initial um, presentation, and uh, viewers, we'll be back with you in a moment as we seek to dig a little deeper. Okay. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum. Shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. All right, we are back with you. Um, viewers, I hope that you will be benefiting. I, um, Reverend Hines have itemized quite a few challenges and I think she ended on a, almost a solution in a sense. So when we talk, as she talked about the whole idea of the village yes. helping, uh, and in a way that is um, that is really, in many ways, a solution. I mean, we, how, how can we get back there? It may not be the same um, way it used to happen, but as Reverend Kelman said, even if we have that mindset of assisting, reaching out, reaching out, reaching out. No, I think it has to do be has to do with how our perspective of, of who we are as family, yes. who we are as a community. And as you mentioned just now, um, the church. Yes. The church yes. can be a powerful institution to help. Yes. I, yes. I would say sometimes when I have um, maybe dedications, I would say to those parents when they come for counseling, mm -hmm. you know, the church can help you raise yes. your children. Yes. You know? Yes. And of course, you have the institution of the school as well. Yes, yes. Um, I think it has to be a partnership. Yes. A partnership yes. between the, uh, the, the home, the, the, the school, and, and the church. Even the community centers, mm -hmm. you know, that where they meet sometimes like once a month mm -hmm. or whatever, and they have for talks. For sports. Yeah, sports, not, not only for sports. Mm -hmm. There are some community centers that they will meet to talk. Mm -hmm. The mothers will meet and talk and so on. Mm -hmm. All of that, it, it is so important. Mm -hmm. I, 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 when I got up this morning, this came to me. And I don't know how 
aware we are of postpartum depression, mm -hmm. but very real, very real, where you, you, you're a, mother, a young mother, you've just had a baby, mm -hmm. but there's no support system. Mm -hmm. And, and you, the baby is there, uh, especially if it's a colicky baby, that's crying, crying all the time. Mm -hmm. And this mother can go into depression yeah. because you, 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 you still have everything to do as you had to before, but now all of a sudden there's, there's this little beautiful child that all of a sudden is not so beautiful to you at all because you feel you would take it and throw it somewhere. Mm -hmm. the, the constant crying, the con and, and that can send um, new mothers into depression That's right. and and so you need we need to, to even in our communities look out for these mothers mm -hmm. do they have somebody there mm -hmm. are you willing are we willing even as all the mothers to say listen bring the child over um, you can leave him um, when you when you're going to collect the other one from school uh, um, I, I hold him for you for an hour and when you come back go home and do what you have to do and then come back for That's the child. That's where sometimes to granny help. Exactly. Or auntie help. Yes. That's where so families is necessary that we live in that kind of spirit that that is not a problem if granny takes the child for a day, even a day or two. Exactly, day, or, exactly. Or auntie, yeah. Well, the challenge though is that grannies are younger now. <laughs> but that is true <laughs> too. Yeah, that is um, true. But, that, but see, still. See, I, I, I think though the issue though is for us, I think what we had naturally in the past, mm -hmm. we have to to, to reinvent. Reinvent and uh, recreate. Yes. In different ways. In different ways, right. yes. And, and I think that there has to be uh, a more broad ranging, you know, um, service, yeah. services mm -hmm. offered, mm -hmm. right, um, for, for those new new parents. Yes. Especially new mothers. The new mothers, say. especially. And I mean, you're right because, I mean, there's so many stories of mothers who would throw a trip on the bed. Yes. Or the wall to yes. come a day. You get a fit of anger. Yes. And rage, yes. You know? Yes. Um, I think that that I think it's, it's maybe we have to look at though. Yes. We made a point though, um, Rabbi Hines, that I want to kind of mention though that it kind of takes into what we just said about the whole issue of uh, mothers being of taking care of themselves in terms mm -hmm. of their own fatigue and that stuff. Mm -hmm. and I mentioned with dependence to independence, and uh, sometimes mothers can give their entire lives to their children. Yes. And then the children grow up, they leave home. And there's a there's a huge gap, yes. huge space. The sometimes, emptiness syndrome. Sometimes even that same depression you talked about. Yes. Um, postpartum. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know when, when 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 children leave home. Yes. You know um when, when was it post leaving home? Yeah. <laughs> right? um, mothers can go into that end of depression as yes. well too. Yes. And so I want to raise the the, the idea though, or the or the thought that. That even though you are a good mother, mm -hmm. you should still find time to take care of yourself. Of your, uh, look, person. I, I, remember I to care for. There, there, yes. there, there, there are some things that I just want to mention as well. Yes, sir. And and um, these come from Carter Scott. Ten truths mm -hmm. for every mother. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not going to mention all ten, but just mm -hmm. to pull out a few yeah, sure, quickly. Sure. First, so on having a child changes your life. Mm -hmm. uh, listen, it changes your life forever. I thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It really does. And motherhood is an experience like no other. There's no other experience in the world like motherhood. Okay. Um, uh, the, the, nine, the, the nine months before and, and the time, because uh, motherhood isn't just when the child is born. Yeah. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. A mother has many roles, and 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 when you you look at that, you're you, you're not just cook and 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 and, and um, um, the person in the home providing, but you're also the financial controller. Mm -hmm. You you are you are the lawyer. You are the doctor. You're the first doctor, the nurse. You you, you the many many roles that mothers play. First teacher. Yes, so much so. And it's important to to grow as your child grows. Yeah. Now, now, what do I mean by that? As a mother, as you see your child grows, as your child grows, as, as he or she grows physically, even emotionally, you, you watch that growth and, and, and it, has, it, it, it reverberates towards you. Because even with that emptiness, even with that emptiness syndrome, Sometimes we as mothers put too much into, and, and sometimes we don't know what is too much, but sometimes we put t 
too much into bringing up our children that we neglect ourselves. So that when they're ready to leave, then we really empty and true, you know? <laughs> there, there, there's no church, there's no social group, there's no um, somebody even next door. That, so everything is empty. They've gone on to college, they've gone wherever. And, and then you, you are now looking to find yourself. Sometimes even there's no husband because he may have gone as well. He may have died, but he may also have gone. So that, that emptiness thing is a serious thing as well. So we have to, to learn how to cushion all of that by helping to take care of ourselves. So they must be balanced. Yes, they yeah. must be balanced. Balance, yeah. They must be balanced. So remember to take care of yourself. That is essential. And I'm going to end with this one. There's no such thing as a perfect mother. Mm -hmm. That person has not been born yet. A, a super mother. <laughs> a super there mother. may be some super <laughs> ones, but not a perfect one. Yeah. Not a perfect one. Uh -huh. Yes. And that this process of mothering really never ends. Mm -hmm. It never ends. Yes. I think a point you made over and over, the whole idea of overload. Yes. And that can... How do you tackle that? You, 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 have, <laughs> you have to care for yourself. You have to, we as mothers, we have to find, even if it is once a month, all right? And it should be more than that. It should be at least twice a month, every two weeks or so, that you find somebody who you can say, please take this child for me. I want to go and get my hair done. I want to go and get my nails. I, 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 I just need to do some self-care, mm -hmm. all right? And that person may be somebody in your family, somebody at church, some, some other safe environment. And I want to stress that. That's key. That's <laughs> right? key. That's key. Safe environment. Mm -hmm. That that child feels safe and you feel safe in your own heart and mind that that child is going to be well taken care of. Mm -hmm. So you can take care mm -hmm. of your, go to the beach, you can take care of you because mother burnout is a serious thing yes. and it can happen. Of course when there's burnout from mm -hmm. a perspective and you're not able to give the maximum care. Exactly. You know? exactly. And that's why we, we dads need to, to help. Need to help. To help. You know, I mean, as you said, um, the book by Edith Clark, Edith Clark, is it? Mm -hmm. no. My Mother Who Found Me. Yes. And it, it, I mean, in our Caribbean setting, that is replicated several times. Yes, it is. Know? It is. I'm seeing some changes. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I, I like to, as I said to the women, even um, the wives the other night, I said to them, my husband, Meredith Hines, the only thing he did not do for those children was nurse them, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. e everything else. We learn how to work together, mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. When we come in, he in the kitchen, mm -hmm. I wash in, and then I come, we, we, we work together so that when everything is finished, you sit down together. That is our time. We put them to bed, that's our time together, right? Because both persons are working. Yeah. When both persons aren't working, it's a little different, but when both persons are working, we learn to, 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 to do so that. So there needs to be an understanding in terms of sharing responsibility. Yes, you know? so um, important. Uh, and even in terms of the the PTA meeting, yes, you know, yes. Um, going when there's sports day, yes, it can't be always mommy going. That is can go sometimes. <laughs> exactly. So, so sharing, sharing responsibilities when there's homework to be done. Yes. You know, um, because I mean, a child is grown. There, there's always homework to be done. If you have two or three or four children, you have to help. You know, I suppose as they get older, some of the older children ones, can help. Uh, help the younger ones. Yeah, the younger ones. But there's all so a never and end. still have to supervise. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, what I'll say though is that, and if you raised it earlier, the importance of co-opting other persons into yes. co in the process, yes. even in cases where there's no Mm -hmm. Male as present, yes. and I agree with you yes. that there are some changes though. Yes. Uh, men are doing a lot more. A lot more. Oh, yeah. yes. Oh, yes. Course, you you see them taking cases, the children to the nursery, right. yeah. you see them feeding their babies, and so on. Yeah. Yes. In some so, cases, but, but they but have but single parent that are men. Yes. But, 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 but there's some cases <laughs> where, where um, there may not be a male present, and I would want to encourage mothers though to find wholesome males, whether it's from the church yes. or from the community or your family mm -hmm. that can help to impact the children. I know I didn't say boys because yes. there's a misguided <laughs> belief that 
only the boys need it, father. Both need it. Both need it. true at all. No. Girls need fathers. Oh, yeah, you've got that right. Right. So so get some, get a wholesome meal of some wholesome men. Yes. You know, that can be trustworthy. Yes, yes. Which means that the critical nature of building relationships. Yes, yes. All right, we're going to pause here. We just have a few minutes left. We can come back. And, uh, of course, Lao Reverend Hines to make a final comment. And then, of course, um, Reverend Kelman will give us a closing prayer. Okay, viewers, back with you in a moment. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum, shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. Back with you for our final comments. I'm um, Reverend Hines. Again, thank you so much for sharing with us. We appreciate You're most welcome. The sacrifice you've made to be with us. You can share us with our final comments as we bring this session to a close. And the Reverend Kelman will pray for us. I'm g gonna share uh, another quote with us. It says, there are no mistakes in life only lessons, lessons to be learnt and relearnt until they're no longer lessons. <laughs> um, I think as parents, we need to understand that, yeah. Yeah. that everything that occurs in life, not just the good things mm -hmm. are lessons, yeah. but the bad things. They, 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 we can learn from the bad things. Right. We need to be able to have that mindset that says, okay, what? Well, for me, it is, okay, Lord, what is it that you want me to learn here? I, I need to learn a lesson here. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and as our children come along, we, 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 not only do we teach them, but we learn from them. Right. There's so much that I learn. I tell the children that I, I used to, I said, when I come into this classroom, I haven't just come to teach you, but I've come to learn something. What, um, what is it that you're going to teach me today? That's because I have a teachable spirit. And, and even we as parents, we need to have that teachable spirit. We, sometimes we feel our children can't teach us anything. That's not true. We can learn so much from them. And, and when we come with that teachable spirit, it's amazing how they feel empowered right. to, to, to then assist us in whatever way. All right. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I want to, to say to us as parents, this as on mothers. Indeed, mothering is one of life's greatest opportunities to submit to the fires of transformation. Whatever that transformation is and whatever form it comes in, uh, let us in our own hearts and minds have the mindset of submission, submission. Mm -hmm. And as we do that, we will see transformation taking place, not only in their lives, but also in ours. Reverend Kelman? Yes. Almighty oh, God, we again give you thanks for this wonderful time, this session, Lord. We thank you for Reverend Hines and the way she have shared. And we pray, God, for your continued blessings Jesus. upon her ministry. But Lord, we lift every mother oh, out Jesus. there, Lord, yes, to you today, Lord. Lord. Yes, and we Jesus. pray, God, for your continued strength oh, and guidance Jesus. and wisdom in their lives, Lord. Perhaps there's some father who are growing tired and weary and frustrated oh, and anxious, Lord, and maybe even depressed. Yes. I pray, God, that you will comfort them today oh, with Jesus. your love and with your mercy, Lord. Yes, Energize Lord. them, oh God, oh, Jesus. for the task, Lord. I pray, Father, that as they submit themselves, oh God, to the fires of transformation, the gift of motherhood, Lord, that, that you will make them, Lord, into what you would want them to be. Gracious God, Thank you. bless them. Yes, Lord. Prosper them. Yes, Lord. Prosper their children as well. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.